And good morning to you all and a happy new year. Thanks for joining us for this year's first China 2022 digital show. I'm Will Dupree coming to you from Austin, Texas. And I'm Andrew Martin in Fresno, California. Will, happy new year to you as well. You know, we are exactly one month from the official start to the 2022 Winter Olympics, the opening ceremony. February 4th. Can you believe it? I cannot believe it. I mean, first of all, that we are in 2022 is just unbelievable to me. But now that we're kind of full circle moment going back to the Winter Olympics, I feel like we were just here a few months ago. <laughs> well, we were. Right. <laughs> I mean, we didn't get back from Tokyo until, I mean, the Olympics were in, uh, you know, in, in July and August of, of 2021, even though they were Tokyo 2020. Right. Pushed back because of the pandemic. And so, you know, you get back from Tokyo and six months later, boom, there's another Olympics. Yeah. Uh, these Olympics, by the way, will last until February 20th. So the official ceremony, the official opening ceremony is February 4th, the closing ceremony on the 20th, but competition actually begins on February 2nd with curling. So we're even closer to the start of the <laughs> Olympics than the official ceremony. Oh, wow. Well, Andrew, I hope you've caught up on your sleep from traveling to Tokyo because you and our next star team of reporters, here they all are right here, are going to China very, very soon to cover the Winter Olympics. When do you all head there? So we will leave for China on the 29th of uh, January, but we're all going to meet up in Los Angeles on the 27th and do the same thing that we did uh, leading up to Tokyo. So we're going to gather in one spot. Los Angeles will be our exit point from the United States. And then we head on over to Beijing. We quickly get our newsroom set up when we're over there. We'll shoot some promos. We'll kind of get the lay of the land. And then we are full steam ahead because we're going to be servicing uh, all the, the, the markets and all the stations uh, throughout the next our nation. So we've got a busy uh, two months ahead because January is the, is the prep month. February is the execution month, and then uh, you know by the time we get back is when I'll actually catch up on my sleep. The answer to that question is no, um, <laughs> but in March and April is when I'll catch up on my sleep. That and probably the plane ride over. Yeah, well, hopefully that'll be good then. Well, you know, your trip is happening, as you well know, Andrew, and many of you out there, as the Omicron variant of the virus that causes COVID-19 is spreading rapidly across the world. We really want to focus and hone in on the U.S. at this moment because Omicron is now causing the majority of COVID infections here in our own country. If you take a look, this is the latest available data from the CDC. We are expecting new numbers at some point, but the CDC pointed out that during the week of Christmas, Omicron cases made up 58% of all infections here, already surpassing those caused by the Delta variant. Meanwhile, the list of countries with both confirmed and suspected cases of Omicron has now grown to 110. That's according to the World Health Organization. This map that you see right here from the WHO shows where there are verified cases of Omicron. That's all of those shown in blue. Pretty much every continent is touched at this point. While you may notice some, a few that are colored in that mint green, those are where cases are waiting to be verified. So, Andrew, that really begs the question for all of you who are going to Beijing to cover the Olympics. How is Omicron affecting the plans now? Well, great. Uh, greatly is what I should say there, Will. And, uh, you know, we had an IOC board member, Dick Pound, longtime board member, uh, you know, recently came out and said, hey, just want to mention that it's not out of the realm of possibilities that the Olympics could be canceled. Hmm. And, you know, he sounded the red flag leading up to Tokyo. And, of course, the games were not canceled. They were still held. Um, there, there are a lot of concerns about this variant and a lot of concerns in general just about putting on an Olympics during the pandemic. But the odds of... Well, the odds of them canceling the, the Beijing games are, are, are probably zero. It's very, very minuscule at this point because Tokyo was able to hold it uh, during a pandemic. You know, it's the same precautions that, that we're all uh, anticipating. We were tested regularly for COVID-19 in Tokyo. Um, we were told that we're going to be tested even, even more so in, in Beijing mm -hmm. every single day. Still need those two negative tests before we leave the United States, one within 96 hours of leaving, one within 72 hours of leaving. Uh, masks everywhere and, and those regular non-medical, uh, you know, the, those, those non-surgical um, uh, masks are, are not going to be good enough. We have to wear the N95 masks hmm. when we're over there every single day. So just taking precautions and making sure that we maintain distancing as much as possible. For me, the concern has always been, and this was the concern in Tokyo as well too, what access are we going to get to the athletes? Are we going to be allowed to interview them in person versus virtually? Um, are we going to be able to go in mixed zones, et cetera? So uh, right now we're anticipating the worst, um, but it's still the Olympics. So we're excited to go over there and we will see uh, 
what things are like when we get there. But Beijing, by by all uh, accounts, is going to be a little bit more on lockdown than Tokyo was. Hmm. That will be interesting to hear what you all experience in person, and again, what access you'll get,、uh, just because of how tightly they are controlling much of the games and. What the venues are going to be too. So, while we have everybody watching our stream today, I think it's just important to reiterate what some of the tools are that the CDC recommends for people to be safe and protect themselves against COVID-19. So, if you take a look, these are nothing new. The CDC is recommending that you get the COVID-19 vaccine and the booster. You should wear a mask when you're in indoor public places too, and test to make sure that you're not infected. And will let me also point out too that it is a requirement for all U.S. athletes. We've been talking about this for、uh, for I believe the last couple of months, but all U.S. athletes must be vaccinated. That comes directly from the U.S. OPC、uh, in terms of media there for for coverage. All of those under the NBC umbrella, which of course includes our team, we must be vaccinated as well. Now we were vaccinated going to Tokyo.、Um, I don't know if all the members of our team have gotten the booster shot. I have. I got mine in November,、hmm. so that certainly helps with the.、Uh, You know that the prevention of the spread and the protection against the the Omicron variant, but、uh, yeah, they're taking this very very seriously, just like they did in Tokyo. Yes, they are, and it's affecting again the trial events that are happening all across the country to get Team USA formed and ready for the Olympics. It's having an effect on those events. Yeah, I know. It's kind of interesting too. You've got the long track speed skating trials, Will, that are taking place later this week. Matter of fact, they begin tomorrow in Milwaukee. And the news literally just came out about the last-minute change that these trials will take place without fans and without journalists. No media allowed to attend these long-track speed skating trials. The five-day trials will determine who represents the U.S. on the long-track team at the Beijing Games. Now, these photos are actually from the short-track squad that was set last month at separate trials in Salt Lake City. But you know. I got to go to the track and field trials in Eugene, Oregon, ahead of the Tokyo Olympics. They did allow fans there, and I talked to parents, I talked to you know siblings of, of athletes, and they were so excited to be able to see their family members, friends, and family members compete because they knew that they weren't going to be able to go to Tokyo. No fans were allowed in Tokyo. In Beijing, Chinese fans are allowed to go, but no foreign spectators. So some similarities, some differences, but definitely a a, a red flag if you're not allowing fans and journalists at one of the The, the big, you know, Olympic trials events too, because this is where Team USA, at least, you know, partially, Team USA is is being determined. But they're doing what they can to keep the athletes safe, as they will once、uh, everyone gets over to China. Yeah, just having to deal with it like the rest of us. And athletes are being affected by COVID-19 too. We do now know that American champion skier Michaela Schifrin, she is back in competition after recovering from a COVID-19 infection. Her name appeared on the official start list yesterday at the Women's World Cup slalom event in Croatia. The race is happening more than a week after a positive COVID-19 test forced Schifrin to sit out two races in Austria. However, her American teammate Nina O'Brien is now among a group of racers who tested positive and will miss today's slalom. The coronavirus seems to increasingly affect the women's circuit at the moment, with just a month left until those Winter Olympics begin. You know, with Michaela Schifrin,、uh, will certainly she's very decorated.、Uh, she is a favorite to win gold again at the Olympics. She is also one of the faces of, of Team USA. We talked in Tokyo,、uh, you know, leading up to the Summer Games just months ago、uh, about how you know you've got Simone Biles, you've got Katie Ledecky. Those are the faces of Team USA. It's Michaela Schifrin, it's Sean White, it's Chloe Kim, it's Nathan Chen. And so, if one of those athletes is unable to compete, and thankfully Schifrin back, as you mentioned, competing now. After dealing with、um, about COVID nineteen, if you have you know one or more of those athletes who is unable to compete in Beijing, then that's certainly going to be a blow to to NBC, which we'll talk about it later in the live stream. Is trying to promote both the Olympics and the Super Bowl in in a short time frame. You don't want one of the faces of your coverage to be out with with COVID or, or something else. Yeah, we'll have to see again what what plays out in just a month. <laughs> Yeah, well, Michaela Schifrin is obviously an athlete for Team USA. There is a Japanese figure skater who is going for his third consecutive Olympic gold medal. This guy is amazing.、Uh, will Yuzuru Hanyu? I think I'm saying his name correctly. Japanese figure skater who's going to attempt a high flying trick in the Beijing Games, a quadruple axel. I know you can pull that off, Will. You're incredibly talented. But this guy, 
He, the day after Christmas, Yuzuru Hanyu tried to land a quadruple axle for the first time in competition. He landed on two feet, so it only counted as a triple axle, only a triple axle. Later in the competition, he did hit three quads. He won his sixth Japanese figure skating title. One of his main challengers in Beijing will be American Nathan Chen, who beat him in all four of their head-to-heads during this Olympic cycle. Nathan Chen, three-time world champion, five-time U.S. champion, fifth in the 2018 Olympics in Pyeongchang. He did win a bronze medal as part of the team, but didn't win one individually. Huge disappointment. Nathan Chen expected to do big things in Beijing. Yeah, he is definitely ramping up and trying to change that trajectory back from the last Winter Olympics, and he's going to face some tough, tough competition with uh, Yuzuru Hanyu. I mean, quadruple axle, four turns up in the air before landing on the ice on one foot. <laughs> yeah, nobody has, has successfully landed a quadruple axle in competition. He would obviously be the first. And you know what? He's already got two gold medals, so why not try to go for the gold and do it in style? But yeah, he's uh, 27 years old, I believe, wow. and again, six-time Japanese figure skating champion. So he, he certainly is one to watch out for, but uh, I expect Nathan Chen to medal this time around. I know Pyeongchang was a big disappointment for him mm -hmm. to not finish on the podium individually. He is tearing it up on the circuit leading up to the Olympics. So we'll see. A tough competition, and I cannot wait to watch, too. Well, we also have to talk about hockey, one of the biggest winter sports out there, and the men who are going to compete on the American Olympic team now have their head coach. He was named just pretty recently. David Quinn will serve as the U.S. men's hockey coach for the upcoming Winter Olympics. He is the only member of the coaching staff not currently working for an NHL team. Important to note, because the league decided not to send any current players to compete at the Olympics. We'll talk about more on that in just a moment, but Quinn coached the New York Rangers the past three seasons and was supposed to be an assistant under the team's head coach, Mike Sullivan. Yeah, Will, you mentioned, uh, I mean, it's great that they obviously have, uh, you know, have David Quinn in place. He's a guy with uh, tons of NFL, NFL, NHL experience, excuse <laughs> me, but uh, you mentioned the fact that uh, athletes from the NHL are not going to be competing in Beijing. That's an about face because mm. in, I believe, September, we heard that it was going to be the case. They didn't get the chance to compete at the Olympics in Pyeongchang, but with the NHL having to recently pause its season um, due to COVID-19, they decided to hit the stop button on the Olympics. Men's hockey at the 2018 Winter Olympics took place without NHL players. That will once again be the case four years later. You know, I think everybody was looking forward to this. You know, we made this a big part of our collecting bargaining agreement um, as the players to try to bring the Olympics back. And for a while, that was the plan. The NHL did not send players to Pyeongchang for financial reasons. After sending players to the previous five Olympics, beginning in Nagano in 1998. In September, a joint agreement was reached between the NHL, the NHL Players Association, and the International Ice Hockey Federation to send players to Beijing. Last week, there was a new agreement, a withdrawal from the Olympics due to COVID-19. You grow up dreaming of winning a Stanley Cup. Um, you know, I've been able to accomplish that. And then uh, you grow up representing your country at, at the Olympics and winning a gold medal. And that's something that... Uh, you know, probably won't have a, a chance to do now. The NHL scheduled a break in its regular season in February. It was to accommodate both All-Star Weekend and the Olympics. It will now be used to reschedule games that have been postponed due to COVID-19. It's just uh, it's just a tough situation for everybody, right? I mean, you're excited to, to be able to get the chance to represent your country. For Patrick Kane, he had already been named to the U.S. Olympic team. I felt like I, I would have had a chance to be in like a leadership role this year, so it would have been fun to play with a lot of you know, younger players, some, some great players around the league. And Andrew, we do want to mention about the women's hockey team for America. Yes, absolutely. Men's hockey... say that for Patrick Kane, um, disappointed, obviously, for him. He was one of three... Uh, American uh, NHL players who had already been named to Team USA. And again, as you just heard, he was looking forward to not only the Olympic experience, but to be uh, a mentor for some of the younger players. So um, the NHL will hope to come back in 2026 to the Olympics, but for two consecutive uh, Olympics, we will not have NHL players compete. But yes, we do have the final roster from the U.S. women's hockey team. It was named over the weekend. Um, 
23 players. This was announced on Saturday. Now, the women's hockey team won gold in Beijing. This team includes 15 women with prior Olympic experience, eight competing in their first Olympics. Hillary Knight, at 32 years old, going to her fourth Olympics. This is a star-studded roster, Will. Huge. And the age range is pretty amazing, too, from 19 all the way up to 32. So it's going to be a great group to watch, see if they can win another gold medal coming up in Beijing. Now, next month, of course, it's going to be a very busy time for both sports fans out there and some of the broadcasters that we're going to bring into our conversation right now. That is because not only is the Winter Olympics airing, but also the Super Bowl a lot to cover and Andrew we again have someone to bring into the conversation now and I'm hoping that both of you can kind of parse out how you're going to handle both of these things happening at the very same time amazing <laughs> yeah so let's welcome in Jack Doles he's the sports director at our station in uh, Grand Rapids Michigan Wood TV uh, Jack welcome Jack and I have both covered Super Bowls we've obviously both covered the Olympics this is such a unique situation because in 2018, NBC also had both the Super Bowl and the Olympics, but there wasn't that overlap because now we have an 18-week regular season in the NFL with that extra game being added. Jack, we all know how big the Super Bowl is. Let me ask you this. Do you like the idea of the Super Bowl taking place during the Olympics? I do, Andrew, and I, I think it's smart business for NBC to do this because uh, the spotlight is completely on NBC during this uh, you know, Olympic run. It doesn't get taken away for the Super Bowl by another network. So you know, they can cross promote with the Olympics and the Super Bowl. I expect this Super Bowl to be, if, if they've got the right teams, it, it could be the highest ranked, certainly among the highest rated Super Bowls ever. Uh, it, again, we'll see who gets in there, uh, but you've got the beautiful venue in Los Angeles, uh, what an amazing looking stadium. Uh, but to have both of these big events on the same network in the same period of time, I think that's just smart business for NBC to do this. They pushed this. They were supposed to have last Super Bowl, Andrew, but they right. pushed it back to, to make sure that, you know, the attention wasn't taken away. Yeah, they traded with uh, CBS, right? I think CBS was supposed to have this year and NBC was supposed to have last year. You mentioned SoFi Stadium, by the way, Jack. It is a beautiful facility. I was there uh, just, I think, Three weeks ago with my dad, uh, Giants and Chargers were playing. We're huge Giants fans having grown up in New Jersey. And it is a, it is a, it, it's immaculate. It's phenomenal. Between that stadium and Allegiant Stadium, uh, where now the Raiders play in Las Vegas, they're getting a Super Bowl a couple years down the road. Um, the, the NFL really tries to give these, uh, the, these new stadiums and these, these, um, these franchises that relocate a chance to host the Super Bowl. So um, I, I'm, I'm excited to check it out. And you and I will be watching the Super Bowl, obviously, from, from Beijing. Uh, you know, uh, did, it'll be a different day for us out there, too, but it's kind of cool that we'll be able to do that. Um, and, and let me ask you about this, Jack. So the Super Bowl is on day 11 of the Olympics on February 13th. The Olympics are going to be on in the post-Super Bowl time slot, which is something that we're not used to seeing. NBC loves to, um, they love to promote, uh, you know, different type of, of programming, some new show that's coming out or bring back, you know, an, an old favorite. Sometimes it's a talk show. They might have, uh, you know, Jimmy Kimmel or I'm sorry. They, they, they might have, um, they, they might Fallon, have uh, yeah. J J Jimmy Fallon is what I meant to say there. Um, I'm curious if NBC, in your opinion, is doing the right thing by promoting the Super Bowl during the first week of the Olympics and then promoting the second week of the Olympics during the Super Bowl. Is that how you would handle it? That's exactly how I'd handle it. Um, it's, it's your biggest event. You've spent so much on this. You've invested so many people. Uh, and, you know, that is a great place to, to drop a new show, but they've got this going on at this time. So it only makes sense. And I wouldn't be surprised if a big, big event, uh, like maybe the, I haven't looked at the schedule that closely, Andrew, is, is that about when figure skating finals are? I, I would imagine they would have a big event dropped in that slot. Yeah, I haven't actually looked that up myself too, but I, I'd be shocked if that wasn't the case. You know, some, some type of finals or some type of, you know, big high viewing event because, correct me if I'm wrong, the time difference is actually going to work out really nicely in everyone's uh, favor because it's, it's what, 18 hours, uh, you know, ahead Eastern time. And so when the Super Bowl is done, it'll actually be prime time in – Beijing, I think, right? It's it's still confusing to get all these uh, all these time zones, uh, you know, wrapped around our heads since we're well, not. It'll actually... definitely it'll definitely be prime time in the U.S. because that that Super Bowl usually ends around nine thirty, ten o'clock, 
And then that hour is usually incredibly high, highly viewed. That's where they would drop a this is us. Uh, but in this case, it's going to be Olympic, comp Olympic content. Jack, you mentioned uh, that the teams in the Super Bowl possibly mattering. You and I both know, of course, as everyone else does out there, they're, they're going to have, you know, 100 plus million people worldwide watching this game. But let's say the Cowboys are in the Super Bowl, right? America's team. Let's say Tom Brady and the Buccaneers are in the Super Bowl and he's going for his unprecedented eighth ring. How much will that help the ratings if, if the do the teams really matter? Can that make a difference? Absolutely. If you've got the Cowboys and the Chiefs or the Buccaneers and the Chiefs, I would say if you have the Cowboys and the Chiefs, you've got potentially the highest ranked Super Bowl ever because so many people love the Cowboys. So many people hate the Cowboys and people just love to watch Patrick Mahomes. If you, if you take those two things and put them together, uh, you're going to get a big boost. It ends up being, you know, the, the Titans versus um, oh, who's in the NFC, right? You know, somebody. Cardinals, Titans, Cardinals. Titans, Cardinals. It's not going to be that big of a, a Super Bowl lift for the ratings. It'll, it'll be a pretty well watched Super Bowl, but it won't be, you know, the numbers that you could get if you had say the Cowboys. I'm not saying I'm rooting for the Cowboys. That's not my favorite team, but. <laughs> That's just the way it is. The Cowboys draw bigger numbers. Jack, I did yeah. have a question. All those, Titans, all those Titans fans out there, you know, they're, they're not happy right now you, hearing you say that because they, <laughs> they might be the number one seed, you know, in the AFC by the time uh, we get through week 18. Uh, Jack, I just have one more question for you on this one, too, just out of, you know, your professional expertise having covered Olympics and Super Bowls. Um, something that is beyond everyone's control is, is COVID-19. Is there, should there be... Uh, will there be a contingency plan in place if either the Super Bowl or the Olympics is affected by COVID? There are a lot of eggs in this dual basket. What do you think happens? Well, once it gets started, Andrew, I'm not sure there's anything you can do because the Olympics is in a short, tight window. And it's, it's not like the NHL deciding not to send players because they could use that two-week Olympic window uh, to make up games that are being missed. This is going to be, if an athlete tests positive, they lose that opportunity to win that medal, um, you know, if it's an individual sport. So, you know, it's going to be very important for these athletes to, to follow every protocol and do everything in their power uh, to stay healthy because if you get sick at the wrong time, it's, you're just going to be out. Uh, and when you've got these other sports like hockey where, you know, there's a reason why so many hockey teams have been dealing with COVID. You got small locker rooms, tight teams, physical contact, that kind of stuff. It just, it, it can't be helped and it's going to happen where teams might have to pull out or they're going to have to play a number of games without certain players. We've seen it in the sports world. It's just kind of a fact of life they're dealing with right now. Uh, it's, you, you almost hope if you're going to get it, it's like Michaela Schifrin had it now she should be good to go come Olympic time because she's already dealt with it. Um, it you know, I, and I know that a lot of these athletes are going to have to be vaccinated before they go out there. Um, so hopefully with that, you won't have the sheer numbers that we're seeing in other sports, but it's, it is what it is in this day and age and you've got to deal with it. And um, the, the better you deal with it, the better chance you have of being able to compete. Jack Dole, sports director at Wood TV in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Jack, thanks for joining the live stream, and uh, I'll see you soon. A couple of weeks All in right, Beijing. Yeah. We'll see you there, Andrew. Always nice to hear from Jack Andrew, that's for sure. And he has so much experience covering the Olympics, and we'll luckily get to see his coverage whenever the Olympics begin here in just a month's time. So uh, we definitely thank him for that. And Andrew, I also want to ask you about uh, what are you looking forward to most, the Olympics or the Super Bowl? I mean, because you're such a big sports fan, uh, for sure. Is there one that you're looking forward to most? That's a great question, Will. Um, you know, Jack talks about, uh, you know, the, 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 the big hyperbole when it comes to these events. And the mm. Super Bowl is, you know, it, it's the, the single most watched sporting event of the year, every year, you know, worldwide. NBC with such a unique opportunity here. And we'll be, we'll be hearing about the Super Bowl when we're in Beijing. Now in Pyeongchang, four years ago, uh, the Super Bowl took place just a couple of days before the start of the Olympics. And so hmm. 
we weren't really talking Super Bowl at the Olympics. We will be talking Super Bowl at the Olympics here. I love the Super Bowl, but for me, the amateurism of the Olympics is where it's at. I love the stories. You know, I, I've mentioned this to you a bunch of times before, too, so stop me if you've heard this one. But <laughs> stories such as, you know, the, the curling team winning a gold medal. Guys who get to be, you know, they get their 15 minutes of fame. They are rock stars just for, you know, for, for achieving greatness on that worldwide stage. I love the Super Bowl, but let's face it. The Super Bowl is every year. The Olympics are just every, um, well, I was going to say every two years. It's every four years, you know, for, for winter games, every four years for, for summer games. And so when you get the chance to represent your country, I, I mean, I, it's, it's tough for me to say because I do love both events, but when you get the chance to represent your country on a worldwide stage, that to me is something that they, they cherish on a different level. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they really, really do. The, the Super Bowl is great and I love the Super Bowl, but I'm, I'm really excited to see how Beijing not only handles COVID, but just how American athletes get to compete on the world stage with some of the best, uh, you know, can, can Nathan Chen compete with uh, Yuzuru Hanyu? Can Chloe Kim, you know, do well? Can Red Gerard repeat his feet in, uh, in, in slope style, right? Yeah. Snowboarding. He was 17 years old when he won a gold medal four years ago. So those are the stories that you get once every four years. You know, um, again, once every two years, you know, summer games, winter games, et cetera. But uh, for, for me, the, the Super Bowl is great. The Olympics is like the, the marathon that we all get to cover. So I'm excited to go to Beijing. Um, little worried about the, the Omicron variant because I certainly don't want to test positive myself. Uh, sure. I don't want our team to test positive and have our coverage affected. But uh, it's, it's going to be a, a, a great month in Beijing. And uh, we'll see how NBC handles the Super Bowl from China, because that'll be really interesting for all of us uh, who are over there in Beijing to watch the Super Bowl, uh, you know, a day later, because remember, we're in the future out there with that time That's difference. right, yeah. So, <laughs> the, I, yeah. I will, it'll be interesting to hear from you all how the Super Bowl viewing experience goes, because, I mean, you won't be at like a watch party over here or covering it uh, for your own station there in Fresno, California, so uh, I, I just wonder what that will be like for you all. And Jack is the face, or, or was the face, uh, for the last couple of years of Big Game Bound, uh, you know, another digital show that we produce here across the country. Uh, Chris Hagan from our station in Indianapolis has taken the reins on that. Uh, yeah, because Jack would be at the Super Bowl. There's probably a good chance if this was not an Olympic cycle that I would be at the Super Bowl as well, too, because SoFi Stadium in Inglewood is only about three and a half hours from Fresno, California, where I'm based. And so yeah. uh, the fact that I also work at an NBC station, I would be at the Super Bowl. Uh, I'm pretty confident if I, if I wasn't going to the Olympics. And so I'm um, slightly disappointed that I'm not going to be at the Super Bowl because I would like to check it out at that, you know, $5 billion, uh, you know, SoFi Stadium, but excited to go to Beijing and to work with our very talented team. Yeah, I mean, a, a amazing opportunity to go over there to China to cover the Winter Olympics because we are going to be following along all the way. And unfortunately, this is our last monthly China 2022 digital show, but we're going to be coming back next month and doing our daily live streams, just like we did back during the Summer Olympics. And you're going to be joining us along the way too. Yes, I was actually a little disappointed that I didn't get to join you for the daily streams in Tokyo. It just didn't work out with my reporting schedule over yeah. there. But uh, my, my schedule has changed slightly when I'm going to be in Beijing. I'm working uh, a split shift. So I'll be doing early morning and early evening live reports for stations all over the country. And then that middle portion of the day is when I'll be out gathering stories. So uh, yes, I'm looking forward to joining you for the daily streams. I know you had a ton of talented people uh, join you, David de Guzman, AJ McCord, et cetera. So looking, uh, looking to be a, a part of that rotation and provide great coverage in Beijing. We are getting it already. <laughs> The Olympics are in one month. We had the Japan 2020 stream that we did for like eight months. We had China 2022 for like three months. Three already. months, right. Yeah, we are jumping right back into it. We are getting ready for the daily streams that are going to be coming to February 4th, starting that week. Uh, so again, we're all getting the butterflies. We're feeling the excitement. And we're going to bring it to you every single day. So we appreciate you being over there to cover everything and joining us to provide all the color and commentary about what's happening over there because it's going to be so exciting. It is. So I guess we'll bid uh, adieu for now. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to you guys all again in, uh, in, in a month. Less than a month, right? Because I think the stream starts on the, does, does it start on the day of the opening ceremony or a day or two before? It's going to start before it. So we'll be joining yeah. before everything gets kicked off with the opening ceremony. There you go. All right. Well, Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, Will, great to talk to you as well. And we'll, uh, we'll see you in Beijing. All right. We will see you there. Everybody take care. We'll see you then.